Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, and all that fun stuff. If you haven't yet subscribed, just boom, hit that button and, um, you know, follow along, I guess, whatever it's called. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Today, I'm going to talk about Luminar and specifically an image um, I had a lot of fun with, even though I only spent a couple of minutes on it. So this is like a two-minute edit or something. I don't know what you call, and I haven't titled the video yet, so I don't know what it's going to be called, but let me show you the image. Here we go. This is a bracket set I shot in British Columbia, Canada. So dark, medium, and light. And these were just handheld brackets I shot. And in the past, often what I'd do is just take the three of them, merge them to an HDR, and then get all fun. Um, <laughs> but um, in this case, I'm just going to take that single exposure, and I'm taking the bright one. Usually, if I'm taking a single exposure, I'll take the mi middle one because I prefer to brighten a dark image than to darken a bright image. But Hey man, it's all about uh, experimenting, right? I've talked about that recently. So I'm going to take this bright image and I'm going to turn it into that with two filters. Now, I did a recent video about five back where I said less is more and I've been kind of living that philosophy in some of my recent editing. And I, uh, yesterday's video, I talked about um, a complete edit of a photo with only three filters. So today is two filters. Now, um, I've actually been doing some photos with only one filter. I don't know if I'm going to do a video about it. This isn't about how can you slim down the amount of filters you use because you're looking at a guy that just likes to pile shit on. I mean, I, there's nothing I like more. Well, a few things, but, you know, there's there's nothing I like more in Luminar than just sticking photos and layers and presets and filters and filters and filters and moving stuff and creating what it is I envision. Um, but there are some scenes that just don't require very much. And in those cases, it's important to K-I-S-S, -S, right? Keep it simple, stupid, as they say. Um, so I'm trying to live that philosophy and I'm trying to walk the talk. I've been talking about less is more and three filter edits. And so I'm going one up today and I'm doing a two filter edit. So let's dive into this thing right now. Okay, so here's our base photo. Now filter one is the develop filter, as you can see. And uh, it's a powerful filter. I use it a lot. I don't use it all the time, but I do like it quite a bit. So the first thing I did is actually warm this up. Um, while I normally do temperature and tint opposite directions, temp to blue, tint to pink, middle of the day, I don't really do that. I gave it a tad, just a smidge of warmth, um, simply because it's a bright sunny day. There's no hiding that. I'm not trying to obscure that fact. So next up, I went to contrast uh, pretty high to the, to the right, like 44, and then I went just about the same uh, left with the highlights, I think about 43-ish, right? Um, and already the photo looks better. If, if you look to the, the, the base photo, it was a little too bright, lacking contrast. I think we're getting the clouds under control and more contrast, so it's, it's looking better. Um, but I took the whites down as well, not that much. Jim, about, you know, let's call it 16. And that's when I was at the point and I was like, all right, what am I going to do now? So what can I throw at this photo to get it looking the way I want it to look? Now, to be clear, this is not a photo that I want to completely change the look of. I just want to enhance the natural beauty. So I thought, well, maybe a little tone, smart tone would brighten that darker bit on the bottom, which could be nice. Um, adjustable gradient would also do that. And I'd have the added benefit of being able to play with contrast and vibrance and things like that hey, maybe I'll get saturation and vibrance and just stick that on there and give it a kick of vibrance because there's some great color in the scene, but uh, it's a little dark. So I thought about those things, and then I was like, well, it is afternoon. I could stick a tad bit of golden hour or maybe some color bout. And so that's where my brain goes because I love all these filters, and I, I like sticking them on there and experimenting, but um, I just thought, you know what I'll do? I'll just go get one filter, and that's Accent AI. And so I got Accent AI and I just went like this. I went, boom, let me just move that up until I feel pretty good about it. And I got to about 75 and I said, I'm done. I mean, I'm, I'm literally done. I'm actually not done, but I'm, I'm this close to done. Um, and the truth is Accent AI does a whole lot of stuff, as you can tell. So let me show you the before, right? Darker in the center, darker in the foreground, uh, a little too bright in the sky, lacking the contrast and the pop of the colors. And hey, look at that, Accent AI. So if you've ever used Luminar, you already know about this filter and you've used it and hopefully you, you know how great it is. Um, but it takes the place of a number of different filters, potentially, right? It depends on the image. Um, in an image like this, it takes the place of several filters for me. Um, I did a video a while ago and I'm pointing at the link that I'll provide to it, whichever corner it is. I can never remember, I think it's that corner, but whatever, you'll find it. Um, 
but where I deconstructed the AI filter and found it basically did the work of three, four, five filters. Again, depends on the photo, but the point is in this um, photo, it did everything I wanted it to do, except for one thing. Let me turn it off. All right, now off, look at the clouds, right? The clouds uh, look very different, right? Before, I mean, with AI, without it. Specifically, the dark parts of the clouds, um, which are there and are normal, and with AI, they're a little too dark. So I just went in and I grabbed the brush and I said, hey, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase that AI at about a 75 or so percent opacity. I'm just gonna erase that from the center of those clouds. And so that's something I don't usually think about doing with AI because it just makes such a big impact across the photo. And I generally like it. And I'm gonna do a little bit over here too. Um, so let me go look at my mask. Yeah, um, I just erased something like that, and now I say done, and the clouds look better. They look more normal to me. So XNAI has been applied everywhere, except for having removed it mostly from that uh, the darker parts of the clouds. So that's something to think about. So you get a funny looking mask, which I can show you again. I can just show you the mask. You know, you get a little bit of a funny looking mask, but I don't really care what the mask looks like. I care what the photo looks like. And now I look at it and I think, that's basically, exactly what the scene looked like. And to be clear, I'm not a photojournalist. In fact, I've thought many times about doing a video about that because um, I'm not here to represent something exactly as I saw it per se. However, there are situations like landscapes that are already just immensely beautiful to my eye. I don't wanna overdo it and get too creative. Sometimes it's fun, but not necessary. But uh, scenes like this, I just kinda wanna enhance what's naturally beautiful. And so there's the before and there's the after and a sliding scale will show you that, you know, I think the clouds look good. I think the water looks incredible. The trees look good. The colors pop. There's just enough contrast. I was able to tame the highlights and we're done. So, I mean, it's literally a two filter edit, but more importantly, it's about the power of XNAI because it's an incredible filter. You already know this, but don't forget to do some custom masking. If you get a little too dark in the, in, on a cloudy day like that, um, filter mask those things in or out in this case uh, just to get control over the photo and one more time there's a before and after and one more time here's a sliding and that's it guys just a quick simple video two filters you know boom boom and I'm done it was uh, when I wasn't recording this this was about a two minute edit so you can do a lot in a short amount of time in Luminar and that's the power of it that's why I love it so much so thanks for watching see you soon I'll be back with more videos take care and adios